today I'm going to talk more about um, going deeper into the understanding of mind-body connection, uh, trauma responses, how that affects us on a day-to-day basis, and then again, what do we do? So I'm going to speed up to, um, and if everybody, let me just give everybody a refresher about the trauma patterns that I looked at, you know, of working with brain state technologies. And um, we looked over a thousand brain maps myself personally, and uh, the trauma patterns was actually uh, recognized by Dr. Bob Scare, who was a neurologist and heavily in the trauma work. And after he told Lee that those patterns you're looking at are trauma-based patterns. Um, so let's go for it. All right. So one thing we did not talk about is unconsciousness. And the reason I want to spend time here is because there's a consistent narrative that people who have wronged you in your life were conscious and they're doing so, which that's very hard for a lot of people to digest to think that. The people who you wronged you in your life, even if it's your parents, you think that they consciously did that. But there's a psychological, not just psychological fact, but there's a neurological fact that 95% of our decisions make making are unconscious. Um, so the idea that um, people are acting out of conscious free will, well, let's go back to this old verse that Jesus said. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's so important. As I looked at brain maps over the years, I saw so many clients coming in. um, The majority of them were in the beginning were all um, white women. Um, Looking at their patterns and their situations in their life, you can clearly see how much um, of their day to day activity or their issues were all related to unresolved trauma that they didn't even realize was still happening underneath the hood or underneath the surface. Um, The tissues heal, but the nervous system remembers. Oftentimes we think about trauma and we think about why I I stuff that out or I I don't remember it. um, So therefore it's not present. But that's not really accurate because the body still is holding on to these these emotions and these um, these uh, events that's taking place. The event may not take may not exist externally anymore, but internally the body is still wrapped up in that response. Um, Let me just read this to you. So when your survival is threatened in less than one five hundred five hundredths of a second, your brain has a your brain as able to scan an entire lifetimes of history of trauma and threat, then choose from the relevant data, the defensive protective strategy with greatest survival probability outcome. So that kind of goes back into what I talked about, the unconsciousness and 95% of our day-to-day happening being unconscious because the brain the brain is going to use its database, its internal database, all in that split second just for your survival. You are not making these decisions about what to do when there's a stress or a trauma uh, taking place. This is all split second. It's happening without your conscious participation. After those threats are over, your day-to-day living is now totally impacted where you may avoid certain things based on that event that took place. And that now becomes your new set point of how you're going to live. Um, so let me just move forward here too. Actually, let me scroll forward a little bit. Okay. I don't know what that is, but what am I clicking on? So this is a a map of consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins. David Hawkins uh, figured out how to map certain states of consciousness. Um, And when we talk about consciousness, we're talking about, um, in this regard, we're talking about the emotional consciousness. And when he mapped these scales, the, the scale of consciousness for people, you can go and look at the bottom there where you're starting off with shame. He, he actually mapped it in a way where it has a it gives a numeric value. Um, and as we talk about being stuck in a survival response, as I showed on those brain maps, I want you to take a look at that survival paradigm there on the, the, the lower left hand corner. When you're stuck in survival mode, look at the look at the emotions that you pretty much kind of experience continuously. You got shame is the name of that level, but look at the predominant emotional state, humiliation, the view of life is miserable. Your, your, Your view of God is despising. And I'm not sure what the process elimination means, but so you go up that scale of shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, and pride. 
and you think about the many people that are have dysregulated nervous systems. This is what you're coming up against in a day-to-day life when you deal with people. And it's all unconscious. People are stuck in these states of being. When you meet people who are on those higher scales, you know who they are. They they because if you're on that lower end, they they light up a room. Um, and I'm not meaning in a narcissistic way either, because you can have people who can light up a room and be very charismatic, but they're very narcissistic as well. Um, and that's kind of where you go down that wolves and sheep clothing um, when people are able to to put the the mask on to seem like they're on a higher level of consciousness, but they aren't. And you know that by action because the actions and the congruency always is going to show you um, what state of being a person is in. Um, on the left side, right side, you see this is a regulated nervous system, talks about what it doesn't look like. So it's not like you just always calm. Um, you have, and it's not lots of highs and lots of lows. What you want is you want to be able to have a balance between those highs and those lows. I remember I working and got Kaplan university and it was kind of a sales job and i remember a guy telling me he said man you never want to get too high or too low on this job and i always remembered that and i took that that saying that that idea but i look at it from a mental emotional standpoint as well um you don't want to be too high you don't want to be too low you want to be able to go up this scale of consciousness it doesn't mean that you you don't never want to experience these emotions we're all going to experience some of these emotions on a lower scale the problem is, again, survival mode, that's when you're stuck there, when those are your predominant states of being. Mm. So again, doesn't mean that you're never going to experience these emotions. You just don't want to be stuck in those emotions. And I'm going to pause this for a second. I, grew up in a I think you guys probably maybe seen this so far, but I'm going to use this as, <laughs> as, a, as a teaching point. Um, so this is from Dr. Joe Dispenza. 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 year old years old is memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a computer program. So everything I've been showing you guys is is really the inner workings of the computer program. You can see those brain patterns, you can see those brain maps, and then from there you can you can do a, a cascading effect and how that how that goes across in your life. And when you talk about these memorized sets of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, again, these are just these are things happening underneath the surface. You're not even consciously participating in it. Um, so what you viewed, what you experienced as a kid, if you didn't do anything to undo what you saw and what you experienced, that is in your subconscious mind. Um, and that's why I think for our community, um, the best thing for us to do is to heal because then we start to realize that we aren't the things that we observed. That's not who we are. That's just what we observed. But we've absorbed those experiences. And since we've absorbed those experiences, we need to be able to dissipate, let those experiences go and start to recultivate a new, I want to say a new subconscious, but a more resourceful way of thinking and being. 